Hey Guardians, I just want to let everyone know that I do have both a Twitch and a Twitter, and I'm very active on both. Feel free to come give me a follow on both, links in the description. So, Act 2 of Revenant brought us yet another shotgun, a Void Precision Frame shotgun called Scavenger's Fate that shares the same model as the OG Dustrock Blues. God, I miss Dustrock Blues. Anyway, Season of the Shotgun has brought a lot of competition to the world of both pellet and slug shotguns, and once again, this is actually a very solid choice at least for PvP. So for PvP, and this will be a PvP-focused review with only a brief discussion on PvE, this is actually a very, very solid shotgun. Now, given that we do have Prophet of Doom, also a top-tier shotgun, craftable now, and given that I've already done a review on it, I imagine some of you are wondering which is better, and it really just depends on how you play and what you look for in a shotgun, which of course we will talk about. But first, let's talk PvP rolls. You can see the perk pool on your screen now, and yeah, there's some really awesome stuff here. So first, let's talk about your stat perks, and I'm going to recommend Barrel Shroud, Accurize Rounds, and a Range Masterwork. Assault Mag would be an okay substitute for Accurize, but I value Range, so I'd stick with Accurize, particularly given that I do think this shotgun is best served as a defensive shotgun. Moving on, in the third column, you have Lone Wolf, Slide Shot, and Perpetual Motion, as well as Discord if maybe you want to try to use this thing to hit some clips. Then in the fourth column, really the only thing I'd go for here is closing time for the boost to your handling when you have less than three shells in the tube. So in the third column, Lone Wolf gives you plus 10 aim assist, plus 10 AE, and a boost to your ADS speed, and this doubles when you have no friendlies within around 15 or so meters of you. Then, of course, slide shot for range and reload on a slide. Never a bad option on shotguns. Then perpetual motion, which gives you a boost to your handling and stability while your character is moving, and yes, it will activate even if stowed as long as you're moving. So overall, perpetual motion is probably my least favorite option here. It's not a bad one. In fact, most of the gameplay you're seeing in the background is with a perpetual motion and closing time roll. It's just that I do think slide shot and lone wolf provide higher value. Then of course you do have discord where final blows with another weapon will give the shotgun increased ADS speed, accuracy, and airborne effectiveness for a short time. And while discord is active, final blows will refund ammo. Not a bad perk, but not necessarily my favorite either. I do think it's a good option if maybe you're trying to hit some clips with a shotgun, something like that. You proc a discord and then just fly at an enemy team, try to get a team wipe, that sort of thing. But overall, I do value the other perk options here more. And to be perfectly honest, my favorite option in that third column is Lone Wolf, mainly for the boost to aim assist. Keep in mind, opening shot, which has pretty much always been the preferred choice on shotguns, gives plus 20 aim assist on primaries, but only plus 10 on special weapons. Meaning, Lone Wolf is giving me the same amount of aim assist, but it will double when no friendlies are near me, and I also get a boost to my AE and ADS speed. That's a lot of benefits basically for free. Even at its base performance, Lone Wolf is easily one of the best perks in the game for really any weapon. So I have closing time helping my range and handling and thus my swap speed as long as I can keep less than two shells in the weapon, then Lone Wolf is boosting my aim assist, AE, and ADS speed. Now I will say if you do get a good slide shot roll with closing time, you absolutely should keep it because given how intensely strong Lone Wolf is, it really wouldn't surprise me if Lone Wolf caught a nerf at some point, and if it does, then depending on the severity of the nerf, Slide Shot becomes the new best option. So my two favorite combos really are going to be Lone Wolf with Closing Time, then in second place, Slide Shot with Closing Time. So with all that in mind, let's move on to the next question. How is Scavenger's Fate compared to Prophet of Doom? The answer is one isn't necessarily better, they're just different. Prophet of Doom's main advantage over Scavenger's Fate is that it can have Threat Detector and Closing Time on the same roll, meaning you have double handling perks. And yes, these perks do stack, though not to a particularly intense degree, so the main advantage really is if you do get above two shells in profit and thus lose the benefits of closing time, then Threat Detector is still there to help your handling. But on the flip side, Scavenger's Fate doesn't have Threat Detector, meaning you always have
have to keep an eye on your ammo count and make sure you don't get above two shells and you have to be particularly careful if you're using holster mods because the instant you get above two shells you lose all the handling that closing time gives you. Yes you have perpetual motion here but it requires you to be moving and if you're using this shotgun defensively then the situation where you may need it may demand that you stop moving. But the thing is if you can keep closing time procced then combined with lone wolf or slide shot scavenger's fate is a much more lethal weapon than prophet of doom. It will just hit those one shot kills more consistently than prophet will in the case of lone wolf with closing time and it will hit at further ranges in the case of slide shot with closing time. Now if you're wondering what that looks like then with the base roll we discussed you have 6.12 meters of range then with slide shot procced that goes up to 6.7 meters of range. So the answer is it mostly depends on how you play. I do think both of these shotguns are extremely good defensive shotguns and I think for overall lethality scavenger's fate is superior so really it just depends on if you feel confident that you can keep your ammo low enough to keep closing time active. If not or if you just don't want to have to worry about it then go with profit. But either way both shotguns are very good not as good as deadlock but probably your best options in the energy slot. Now talking pvp performance I'm actually quite happy with scavenger's fate. In my time using it it did exactly what I needed it to and while making sure that I kept my ammo count low enough for closing time to stay procced took a little bit of time to get used to it didn't take very long and when I did scavenger's fate was really messing people up. On top of that the weapon model is slim and unobtrusive which I always appreciate it and it honestly just looks really sick too. But I do really really wish we could use the dust rock ornaments on it. That's kind of an L from Bungie. So scavenger's fate is genuinely a very good PvP shotgun. Now let's get PvE out of the way very quickly. Now I've talked before about why I don't really care for pellet shotguns in PvE outside of lightweights and rapid fires for melee builds in more than a few of my videos. In fact you can check out my deadlock or profit of doom review for that discussion. So I'll say right now you won't see me using this in PvE anytime soon but if you want to then really in the third column I would go with feeding frenzy, repulsor brace, or discord. Feeding frenzy and discord so you just don't have to spend as much time reloading and repulsor brace so if you get a kill on a void debuff target you get an overshield. Then in the fourth column you have destabilizing rounds, vorpal, surrounded, frenzy, and desperate measures. Now if you go with a damage perk like surrounded, frenzy, or desperate measures then I would combine it with feeding frenzy or discord just so you have an easier time keeping the tube loaded and that way can take more advantage of the damage perk. But if you go with destabilizing rounds go with repulsor brace since they have basically perfect synergy and you can pretty well have an eternal overshield in pve with that combo. I would honestly though pretty well just ignore vorpal on this thing. That's really all that I have to say about scavenger's fate. Low tier in pve but fantastic in pvp so if you're a pvp player then yes I do think this is worth grinding prison of elders for and while I do think these weapons should absolutely be craftable at least prison or I'm sorry challenge of the elders is far from the worst thing to grind in the game and I do think this weapon is worth that grind but that's all for me today guardians if you enjoyed this video then do me a favor and hit that like button and leave me a comment with what you want on this shotgun as always hit that subscribe button with the bell icon and don't forget to check the description for my other links for now I'll see you on the next video. Peace, Guardians.